Hey guys, I'm Sun. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In last episode, we went about configuring a hardened Debian server. As I mentioned back then, this was a building block on which we were gonna build additional solutions. Uh, and an example of this is what we're gonna be doing today when we're gonna be configuring a hardened Borg server on top of that. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump in. Um, as I mentioned in previous episode, uh, now, things are packaged in a different way on the Privacy Guide's reference material. Some of the previous episodes, such as uh, the episode on how to configure a hardened Debian server, are now requirements for future episodes like today. Uh, so what that means is you guys have to follow this first, and I have, so we're kind of taking this at this level here, uh, at the end of all of those steps. So that server is now running and I can have access to it. Um, that's, it's my first time. Ooh, I'll, I'll be better in the future, I promise. Um, okay, so as usual, there's a few caveats. You can read those and we're gonna just jump right in. So last time we created a Debian server that has a server admin user and a root user. We log in through SSH using server admin. Uh, in order to make things a little more secure, we're gonna start by creating uh, a set of keys that are gonna be used exclusively when connecting to the server in the context of Borg. So the first thing we wanna do is go into the .ssh folder on our Mac. Uh, actually, you can probably do this on you know, a Linux computer, for instance. I don't know nothing about Windows, so that's a different story. Uh, now, if we go into that folder, uh, we would wanna run this command here and follow the instructions, including setting a passphrase. I already did that. So as we can see here, um, I have a Borg private key and a Borg uh, public key and a Borg append only private and public key. So those keys are already created and the passphrase is stored in my password manager. Uh, if you guys are not familiar to, with uh, Borg versus Borg append only, uh, you can have a look at the episode that I created on setting up Borg clients. Uh, I'll link that in the description. It goes into much more detail on explaining the difference between append only and regular mode. Um, okay, so uh, another little thing here that you guys should be aware of. When doing this, when using a VPS, a virtual private server, uh, as the backend for Borg, uh, the way Borg works, it doesn't work with block storage, it only works with SSH file systems or Unix file systems. What that means is this is actually kind of an expensive way of doing things using Borg base or rsync.net are actually more cost effective for larger uh, data sets. That being said, if you guys are like me, you may already have a VPS in the cloud and you may have like a 10 gigabyte uh, you know, 10, gigab whoa, 10 gigabytes of free space on it that you're actually not really using because you're hosting a website or something. So this is a really cool way of using that same VPS. One of you asked in the comments, hey son, is it safe to use the same VPS for both my VPN in the context of the Strong Swan episode and board backups? Uh, that was actually a great question. To answer it really quickly, uh, it's always more safe, safer to compartmentalize things on different virtual private servers. That being said, uh, you know, both StrongSwan and Borg are really well peer reviewed projects. And I feel comfortable running both on the same server, especially since the Borg backups are encrypted locally on our computer. So it's pretty, pretty safe. And the cool thing with that is if you're actually using that VPN to terminate your internet, while doing the backups on that same server is actually pretty performant because you're saving on hops, so less latency, better speeds, etc. Okay, all that said, uh, we need to start by setting up an environment variable. This here is set to 10 uh, gigabytes, and then we are going to create a here doc that we're gonna use later. If you don't know what here docs are, it's essentially a way to take a ton of stuff in command line and just dump it into a file. So we're gonna keep this. This here is actually the here doc that we're gonna be using in a second. I'll pop open another tab. Um, now that we're done here, we wanna SSH to the server. So if you've watched last episode, this is exactly where we were at. Uh, it asks me for the private key, uh, the passphrase for the private key of this uh, server private key. Well, that was a lot of private keys there, Jesus. Uh, once this is done, we want to switch to root using su, and we need to have the root password here, 
And now that we're in root, uh, we want to start by adding a Borg user. That's the same, uh, you know, as we did in the context of server and min. Uh, so we need a password for this. Uh, it can be generated using OpenSSL. So I'll pop open another tab and you just generate a random password. Uh, that being said, I already did that. And this here is this uh, password. So I'll use it from my password manager. And now full name, this stuff can be leave uh, let blank, yes, enter, and we're done. Uh, next up here is we want to update the APT index. Uh, so I explained what that was in the episode on setting up a Debian server. And I just did that actually this morning. So everything is up to date. Um, okay, now we want to install Borg backup. And that should be pretty fast. It's a pretty lean project written in Python. Okay, so now that that's done, uh, we want to go about creating a .ssh folder within the context of the home folder of the new Borg user we created. Uh, whoops. And now we're going to use that here doc that we created earlier to create the authorized key file. So all of this here, you know, uh, well, I'm, I'm saying you know, maybe you don't, but cat is a command that is used to display the content of a file. A here doc is essentially a file that can be written uh, in line, as you can see here, and it's then sending that output into, uh, you know, the authorized keys file. So what's this? What this is actually doing? It's taking all of this here between the two EOF uh, pieces, and it's taking all of this content and it's writing it to that file. So we just need to take all of this here and then go onto the server and just run that. Boom. Okay. So now that that's done. Uh, we want to change ownership of that dot uh, SSH folder that we created using root. We want to make sure that it's actually owned by the Borg user and group. So we'll hit enter. Uh, now, let me see here. Uh, that's yeah, everything cool here. So we're just going to clear this clear uh, this. We can actually exit from the server. Actually, the server right now is fully configured and ready for Borg and we can close that window as well. So this is kind of where the episode would finish. Uh, the Borg server is now configured and we can access it using the Borg and Borg append only private keys. That being said, just for sake of making this a little more interesting, um, if we go back to the uh, previous episode on how to configure a Borg client for Mac OS using command line, that episode was actually done using an rsync.net backend for Borg. But it, this actually works very well with the server we just configured. And that's actually what I intended initially when writing this. But I said to myself that some of you may not be comfortable running your own server. So rsync and Borg base are really good uh, alternatives. So when, I, when it says here, you know, step, uh, steps one to four are only required if using Borg base, that was because in this episode, the one that we just, uh, that, that we're recording right now, that episode uh, also generated keys so we don't need to generate them here um, okay so we just can fast forward here uh, to installing homebrew i won't do this all over again if you haven't watched the episode uh, this one here how to configure board client on mac os using command line uh, i'll let you guys watch this one for like the full detailed version that being said uh, we're just going to really skim through this really quickly all of this i've done already uh, I created the password already, and we're just going to initiate a Borg uh, repository on that new server we have. So first step is to load that passphrase into the Borg underscore pass command uh, variable, then same for saying to Borg to use the actual Borg private key. And now we can initialize uh, this repo and this should work. As I've said in the past, I'm always a little nervous because this could not work, you know, the demo thing. But OK, uh, so it's asking me for the Borg uh, passphrase. And this I have right here, SSH Borg. And I'm pasting that there. And if we're lucky, it will create it. And it did. So that is it. Uh, now, the other things that we would want, that we would want to change if going from rsync to, uh, you know, our own uh, self-hosted Borg uh, is to go about 
setting those environment variables. Uh, it actually, as you saw when I wrote this uh, piece of, of material, uh, that actually uses what we just created. Uh, okay, so and then we want to go about recreating all of those files. Now, if you guys have those already, uh, essentially, uh, you would want to back them up and then re-add those paths uh, once that has been created. So uh, again, you would have done a backup and then you would use this command here uh, to you know, restore those paths that you guys want to back up as well. Uh, so I'm just going to go about doing all of those. And what's happening here actually is that it's writing the new board repo uh, variable uh, as uh, using that destination that, um, what's the word I used before? Damn it, that, hmm, backend. Okay, uh, doing this for prune as well. And finally, uh, well, all of this other stuff has been done as well, but I'll just run it to be safe. Okay, so all of this stuff, I explained that in detail in the episode on setting up the client, but what I wanna show you guys here actually is that it works. So let's call a backup, actually I'll clear this first. Let's call a backup, and this should back things up on our virtual private server, uh, and it has. Uh, and as you saw, by the way, it was very fast, actually much faster than rsync.net. The reason for that is I am currently connected to a VPN that terminates at 1984, and the actual board backup server is running in the same data center, so it makes things really snappy, which I love. So that's all I have for you guys. Um, next episode will be about setting up uh, a similar thing on a Raspberry Pi, and we're kind of slowly getting to the end of this Borg mini-series where we're gonna be self-hosting our own Borg backups on a Raspberry Pi that you can then send by mail to someone offshore and have totally sovereign uh, and open source backups. So that is super exciting. We'll get there really soon. So yeah, I'll see you, bye.